impact of a Buhari win. I'm Ivan Katsande in Abuja, Nigeria. We decided to follow the country's story, especially after the just ended elections. The transition between President Goodluck Jonathan's administration into the hands of President Buhari. We wanted to know what is the impact of a Buhari win economically and security wise. The insurgents of the Boko Haram that has terrorized the country in different parts, but especially in the northern part of Nigeria. Join us as we explore the story. This is Dusa Market in the heart of Abuja. Thousands of traders come here every day to sell their produce. A usually very peaceful market, but a day before we got there, there had been reports of a bomb scare. My country is a country that was that was given birth in 1960. That is where we have our independence. And uh, since then, it has not been all that bad for us. We know it's not easy in every country. But in our own here, it is very, we thank God, it's very easy for, for us. But the new government that we have, the new president that we have, Muhammad Buhari, is targeting corruption and is fighting it as we are seeing it. And by the grace of God, it's going to succeed. By the grace of God, it's going to succeed. And if we succeed, everybody in this country are going to enjoy themselves. Okay, so what, what is your comment on the security issues? They say he's fighting the security very well. He's trying in terms of security. He's trying very well. He has been, I mean, the past government have not tried what Buhari is doing now. And now, most of the, I mean, the, most of the, I mean, the student, they are now running away to another country. All the, the territory that they have captured as their own the other time, Nigeria Army have collected it back all. So we are happy over that. And by the grace of God, Buhari is going to win the, the battle over the insurgency very soon. Okay, mm. right. Mm. And what else do you think the government should do for you to improve the lives of people every day? Yes, you say things are good right now. But yeah. What more can be done? Okay. What I want to be done for Buhari to do so that the life, people's life will be improved every day is opening um, a very good hospital for people, a very good school at an affordable price, and taking, I mean, an agriculture loan to uh, farmers to do improve their agriculture. I think from all those things, their life will be a little bit easy for people in the country. Because this country, Nigeria, has been blessed with many things, many good, good things. But our past leaders have mismanaged it. But this word that come now, He's trying his best, and we know by the grace of God, he's, go we are going to, he's going to succeed soon. And when he succeeds, everybody will start to laugh in this country. My name is Mr. Daniel Ie. Daniel Ie. Ie, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, we would like to know what is your comment on the economic situation in Nigeria? Well, the economic situation in Nigeria is not different from what is happening in other part of the world. In every country, they have their own problem, economically. So we are only facing our own, in our own way. And uh, I believe, by the grace of God, it's only difficult for those that are not in the light. Because I believe one thing. The word of God says that in gross darkness, there will be light. So no matter the gross darkness in Nigeria economy, the people of God will shine. That's my comment about it. Yes. Okay. And now that you've got a new president, President Buhari, mm -hmm. who a lot of people during the elections believe that he was the man to change and turn around a lot of things. Nigeria. How do you view this? What Buhari is not God, so he cannot turn around anything in Nigeria. Only God that is able to change uh, the situation of any country. He can only improve on it. Okay, but do you think he's a good leader, generally? Yes. So his ability, he's trying his best. No man is perfect, but he's trying his best. 
Now, what, what is your opinion on the religion divide in Nigeria between Muslim and Christian? Do you think that affects anything? We don't have religious problem in Nigeria. Boko Haram is an enemy to Nigeria. Because you see them bombing the church and bombing the mosque. So I don't think those people are out for a specific uh, religion. In Nigeria, we are one and we stand one forever. Anything else you want to say? All I want to say is that um, Buhari as a leader should concentrate on God, focus on God to help him. And he shouldn't be biased in doing his things. And God will see him too. We are all looking forward to see the change that he has promised Nigeria to come to 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 come and he made some promises too that it, uh, as in the school students that he's going to pay them there will be a free education there will be uh, feeding too we are all looking forward to see all those things come to pass like like i said now things are not all that Things are not all that uh, okay. People are crying, people are complaining. There is no much money in the country right now. Mm. Do you think President Jonathan did a good job? Or you, didn't, you didn't see much results from his report? Well, President, good luck, Jonathan. I will not say he did not do, uh, do uh, he, he, he didn't do well. He did. He did what he felt he can do in his own uh, uh, regime, in his own time. He really tried. He really tried. To me, he really tried. It's just this other one that came. People are looking at it that they wanted a change. They wanted a change, so that is why. But since Bari came into power, there's nothing we can do than to wait for the change to come to pass. My sister, this Boko Haram of 18 have started years back, years back. And you know, in the northern, far north, far north, they've been killing people here and there, even here in Abuja. We are not safe. Like yesterday, I went to Duse. I was told, because yesterday was Duse market day. I was told they caught a, a, a young boy carrying a bomb. They beat him, they almost killed him. Because I saw the boy, but I didn't know what was going on. It was later, I was not hearing that he, 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 they saw him with bomb. But thank God, they saw him quickly before the, the whole thing exploded. Because I was in the market too yesterday. Uh -huh. Like any, in fact, here in Nigeria now, when you go to market, you go to a, 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 a place that a, 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 a people are gathering, you have to do whatever you want to do quickly and leave. Because now the Boko Haram, they are aiming at where people gather, in churches, in the mosques, in the markets. Where people gather, that's where they, they set their, their targets. So that's what I see in this Boko Haram everything. Well, Jonathan have really tried his best. Uh, the Buari said from 90 December, it will be all over. I prayed that let it be over because people are dying. Seeing your fellow human being dying. Children are dying. Women are dying. Both young and old are going. These are life. We are talking about life. We are not talking about good. We are talking about life. So since he had promised that this December, everything will be over. I just pray. We all, that is our prayer as Christians, that let it be over. 
Because this thing, this Boko Haram of a thing, is not only, they are not dealing with only the Christian right now, they are dealing with the Muslim too. Uh -huh. So we are praying that let it be over as he has promised. I pray that let him fulfill his promise. All his promises about the Boko Haram, that let it end at the end of this December. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Nigeria is a federal republic modeled after the United States with executive power exercised by the president. Now, the government of Nigeria is also influenced by the Westminster system model in the composition and the management of the upper and the lower houses of bicameral legislature. Now, the president, however, is the head of the state, the head of government, and the head of a multi-party system. Nigerian politics takes place within a framework of a federal presidential representative democratic republic in which executive power is exercised by the government. Legislative power is held by the government and the two chambers of the legislature, that is the House of the Representatives and the Senate. Together, the two chambers make up the lawmaking body in Nigeria called the National Assembly, which serves as a check on the executive arm of the government. Now, the highest judiciary arm of the government in Nigeria is the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Nigeria also practices Baron D. Montesquieu's theory of the separation of powers based on the United States system. So today we visited the state of Sokoto. Sokoto is based in the north of Nigeria. Now we traveled all the way here to speak to the governor to find out how they've been able to face the challenge of Sokoto being based in the north and their religion also being associated to terror. Hence the Boko Haram insurgents that has really caused disturbance in many parts of Nigeria. This is what he had to say. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's about perception. We are managing a very poor perception from the larger majority of the people who are not uh, familiar with the terrain in the north here. You've been in Sokoto, I, I believe, in the last uh, 10, 15 hours, and you move around, you have seen how people have been going about conducting and carrying their, norm, uh, their normal businesses. Uh, there, there's no any threat. But the perception out there is, if you are coming to Sokoto, people will tell you, be careful. That is a Boko Haram designated or, or, or kind of uh, area, prone area. Yes, and we've actually been told that as well. You, you've been told that, and now yes. you, you're here to see things for yourself. Mm -hmm. We have not had any major Boko Haram issue here in Sokoto. The first and only time that there was an attack on the police uh, outfit in Sokoto Metropolis was about two or three years back. And ever since then, we have not had any attack. We have not been under any alert from security uh, institutions in the state. So it's largely about the perception that we are managing. People believe that when you're coming up north in Nigeria, you are advancing towards a Boko Haram territory. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, perception is, 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 is a big issue. You, are, you can only convince people that that is not the case if, for example, in your own case now, they come down here and see things for themselves. But to convince them to come down is the issue. So we are battling with the issue of perception. And, 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 and by the time we get it um, done with, I'm sure people will believe that uh, it's not as being said that Sokoto in particular is a Boko Haram uh, uh, prone area. Can you say that perhaps Nigeria is fighting a religious war? Not exactly. Um, why I said not exactly because, because if you are talking about a religious war, what religion? I'm a Muslim. I believe that what Boko Haram is doing has nothing to do with Islam. That's my belief. So which religion? Whose religion? What religion? What ideals are they promoting? Nigeria is dealing with a group of people whose ideology is 
anything against humanity. It's inhuman. What they are doing is inhuman. It's against humanity. It's not, it's not for and on behalf of Islam. They are fighting Islam. They are fighting Christianity. They are fighting everybody. Okay. What programs have you implemented to move the state forward, promote the lives of the ordinary civil citizens in the state, especially the youth? Well, as you know, in Nigeria and in particular this part of the country, we've been facing challenges of youth empowerment and youth restiveness. <coughs> Thus far, we've been able to, 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 to reorient re re the youth, redirect them, because that is, that, is, that is the basic issue. You have got to move them away from where they were and convince them that they were on the wrong track and then bring back on the right track then for them to be uh, uh, gainfully employed, um, I mean to be productive and to be useful to themselves and to the society. So what we've been doing basically at the moment is reorienting and redirecting this youth towards a better future. Sokoto is led by the Sultan, who leads about 75.6 million Muslims. It's a predominantly Muslim area. Clearly, as you can see, the kids that are even going into class this morning, dressed in their jihab, ready for school. My name is Mohammed Chika Mohammed, the principal of Yakuma as a science model primary school, Sokoto, Nigeria. Okay. Can you just tell us the education system um, of the state? How do you view it? as the principal of the school? Well, actually, there are a lot of encouragement, uh, more particularly the government. If you look at the school is and you look, uh, the whole school was totally renovated by government. And more teachers actually were deployed. There are a large number of pupils, and uh, boys and girls equally. So in the ratio, one is to three. Uh, because if you look at the population of the school, it's about 4,000 in the entire school. Okay. So the ratio is one is to three. Yeah, uh, get in favor of boys. Okay. Yeah. And this is just a primary school? Yeah, it's just purely primary school alone. Okay, so yeah. what are the activities that you engage the students in? Well, apart from, yeah, about, uh, apart from the teaching and learning, ah. there are a lot of activities. Okay. You know, we have the computer laboratory, we have science laboratory, so we engage them in practicals. So it's it just a position to catch them young. So actually they're doing the best. Okay. And this school is one of the best in the state. And that's what are the popular schools. Okay, all right. Now, I, I'm just going to ask you about security around the area. Being in the north, have you had any disturbances from any insurgents, particularly maybe Boko Haram or something, or this is just a different uh, no, setting altogether? You no, know, we, we have never any problem here. The school is very fenced, and we, there are so many security agents around. And internally, we made several arrangements to actually secure the schools. Yeah. So any last remarks to viewers that will be watching right now? Well, actually, I would like to express our thanks for your for visit. We really appreciate and you are always welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you much. Very thank you. Before school starts in the early hours here in Sokoto, and before we actually get into class, my good friends here would like to say something. That's it. Greetings from Sokoto. very proud of my country, Nigerian, and our president, General Presido Buhari. I'm very proud to be here. You can see where we stay to sell. I'm very happy with what I'm doing. Even I pray that if I should leave this earth today, I will be happy to come back to this Nigeria, to Nigeria, because anything you are doing, except you're a lazy person, you decide to stay at home. But as long as you can come out and hustle, you're able to feed yourself very, very well. So I'm very proud to be a Nigerian. What do you think about the security issues, the Boko Haram? Yeah, the, the security issue, you can see now, it's not like before. Before we used to be very afraid, even when we want to enter inside the market, we'll be very afraid because of, but now the security purpose is very okay. Okay, so President Buhari has really he's, stepped up. He's, he's, very, he's very trying. He's trying, he's doing his best. And we pray that God will keep him alive to continue to do his good work. I'm Christian Ugoke from Enugu State, a graduate of Maritime Academy, did my Maritime Transport. I have my HNDs from there. And I run this shop with my elder brother because of the job scarcity. That is it. Okay. 
So, which means that the government over the years has not been able to provide or create any employment. Yes. To my own thought, employment is meant for the rich here. Because it's like when someone is graduating from school and your, and your dad is rich, he has connection or something, he just picked his son or his child to fix him, him or her somewhere. And we are left here then, to do the hustling stuff by ourselves. We are expecting to graduate with a good grade and get a good job to be difficult, except by the special grace of God. So truth. how has it been for you running a, the, this uh, store here with your brother in the marketplace? Has that been easy or you've got your own challenges that you face? Well, definitely, there will be challenges. You know, you won't expect someone after going to school, you're still staying with a brother or a family member. There are challenges, but I believe I'm trying. I'm trying to like have my own by the special grace of God. That's the only way. Because you can't wait for the job. The job is not there. There's no room, even money for the job. As in, even, how would I call it, money for the job. The government, as in everywhere is dry. Like since, since in the morning, you haven't seen it. You won't see any, anyone coming into the market to buy anything. Everywhere is just, it's just dull. Not like before. What do you think the government can do, though, to improve... The situation right now is anything, anything be done? Is there any hope, especially now that President Buhari has come into power? A lot of people have believed that he's the man to change Nigeria. Based on his campaign promise, I guess we sh we, the, we're all expecting him to do something good. But for now, nothing is. I've not seen anything during Jonathan administration and his. I think for now there's nothing. There's nothing, because when I calculated my own income for last week, and I, I almost shit tears. I like, what is happening? Because something went down, and it wasn't something to write home about. So I just have to manage and still come out this week. That's the truth. So I, we're still hoping. We're still hoping maybe there will be the change he promised or something, or maybe it's one of all these political strategy or something. We don't know. Is too waiting. Do you think President Jonathan did maybe a better job, a good job? Yes, he did. Most especially, there's this uh, program he did that has to do with, uh, I've forgotten it, the transformation agenda or something, I've forgotten. Uh, that one is like creating jobs. He created a lot of jobs. He created a lot of jobs. But that was when his tenure was almost ending. But Buhari is still new. They're expecting, so let's just wait. And pray. Okay. What is your comment on the security issues with regards to Boko Haram? I think the security agencies are trying their best. Uh, they, after all, they are human beings like us. They have their own life to protect first. So I guess we should just wait and pray. Have you ever heard any disturbances on this side? On, on this side? No. No. No, there's nothing like that. And also, just lastly, what is your take on the different religions? How does, because Nigeria has a very strong religious system, Christianity versus Muslim, Islam. Islam. How does it affect people's day-to-day -day lives? Mm, it doesn't. Well, to me, I don't feel anything. Whether Christian or Muslim is nothing. My best friends are Muslims because I was born and brought up in the north. So, to me, it's nothing. It's just a normal, it's a personal uh, this is opinion to choose religion. So it's nothing, whether Muslim or Christian, to me it's nothing, it's nothing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, you see, um, what I know is that there is a lot of graft 
between politicians and the masses. As I told you, I was a school principal, earning 28,000. But when I was elected, we were camp in a hotel before our inauguration. The three days I spent in the hotel, and we were neglected, then we were asked to go home and come back later. I can't imagine. When I asked for my bill, the hotel bill, where I stayed for only three days, I was given a bill, although paid by government, 141,000. Naira. Naira. In my life. I can't, you know, I, I find it very difficult to com comprehend. With all my responsibility as a school principal, earning 28,000, then in 2003, because I was elected a member of the National Assembly, 141,000 Naira was spent on me for just three days. Imagine how many months' salary that could be. So that's how it started for me. I was wondering, what kind of gap is this? So, you see, the problem is people elected to go and have political positions hardly after some time, hardly will they be able to really have or to know the reality of things at their localities because of this sudden change. And because people, and it is like that, it is assumed that immediately you go into politics, you are rich already one day. So people, if you go home to visit your people, to visit your constituency, people will come in hundreds and thousands to come and greet you. And they are not there, there to greet you. They are there so that uh, you should be able to give them something out of what you got from the, from, from the office, the money you are getting from whatever office you are. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. There is a huge gap between masses in Nigeria and people having or occupying elective positions. And this gap will continue. Maybe after one, two, three visits, and uh, people, as I said, will be coming to collect whatever they, they get then you may not want to come every week or every two weeks. You, you will be, you'll be running away from your people. And that running away will make a big difference between what you are there for and uh, what your people, uh, the reality of your people. You will never be able to come close to them again and discuss the issue. Oh, there is a big, big difference between what a Nigerian politician is supposed to do and uh, how he relates with his constituents because of these uh, variables, because of these problems. <coughs> so therefore, you will see that even if when you are elected, probably you have the knowledge of your problems and the problems of the society where you are. By the time you are there, six months, one year, you will hardly know exactly what is happening. Because on the ground, on the ground because mm. when you visit your house, when you visit your home or your town or your village, there are only the people that will only come to you are the selected few who have the privilege of coming to see you. And when they are coming to see you, the reality is they will hardly come and tell you their problems. Their problems. They, they, they will hardly tell you the situation. They will only come to tell you their problems, their individual problems and how you can solve it for them. And this mostly is monetary. So I think uh, that's why 
there is a lot of problem. That's why the trend, actually, I don't think... A huge gap between uh, the poor and the rich. There is a huge gap. And the essence, the essence of uh, representation is uh, it's drill. Because you, 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 don't, you cannot, you can hardly be able to go back to the root and discuss with your people on what you think uh, or what they think you should do for them. Or you can hardly be able to go around to see the exact happenings in your area. It's just what the few people who have interest in getting something from you, they will come and tell you. And mostly they will tell you what they want or what you want to hear because they wouldn't want to do something that uh, will upset you. Uh, and that because if you are upset, mm -hmm. maybe you will not give them anything. All right, so can you just tell us about the transition from that is the former ruling administration uh, by President Goodluck Jonathan. And right now we have the PDP that is currently ruling President Buhari. What will be your comment and comparison between the two? Well, um, I don't really see it. First, my view on this transition of, from Jonathan to Buhari. Despite all the problems of our democracy, I think that one, that singular transition, I think uh, is something we should be happy about it. And it is a sign that uh, at least we are growing. Because, you know, it is moving from the ruling party to the opposition, which nobody thought it could happen maybe in 40 years because even the PDP then was saying it will be ruling this country for 60 years. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good development that uh, it can happen. Would you say that perhaps President Buhari is the military solution to a military problem that we have seen Nigeria facing, especially particularly with Boko Haram insurgency? I think one major issue one major difference between the last administration and this administration is that uh, previously during the last administration, people really don't care. People do what they want. People don't fear authority. And everyone who is in a position will think he can do what he wants and go free. And now, during this administration, even the closest people to the president will always think twice before they do something. Because corruption related. corruption related, whatever. You have to be very, very careful in what you do. You know, you cannot just do what you want and go free. And uh, I think it's a major thing. Any country that lives and uh, any country where people think they can just do what they want, uh, not considering the consequence, I think uh, uh, it's a major problem and uh, it's heading to destruction. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, before, you can see some element of corruption in whatever you do. But now, at least for now, people, even the driver on the road will think twice before he involves himself into any corrupt tendency. So that is another major difference between last administration and this administration. And then I don't see it the way you are seeing it. Because before, if you are not part of, if you are not in the ruling party, you will be, you will be fair, and uh, you always think of what to do or what not to do, because you know that if you do the wrong thing, the government will always maybe uh, help you and uh, molest you and so on and so forth. This man, despite the fact that he's a military, even the opposition have freedom to talk. You can see that anybody can talk. Anybody can view his, uh, uh, can view, can say his uh, opinion, and so on and so forth. 
So though he's a military, this time around, he's not behaving like a military. I think there is freedom in this country now. Both the opposition and ruling party and uh, both the masses. In fact, the masses even now has more say than people at the top. Because people at the top always think they have something, maybe some skeleton in their cabin, and therefore they don't feel free like the masses are feeling free. So they just talk and express yes. themselves. Yes, masses can express, express themselves and then can even challenge even people at the authority. Why did you do this? Which is not possible in the last administration. So I don't see it like a, uh, coming with a, uh, maybe having a military, military solution or whatever. Yes. Although terrorist attacks were on the increase in 85 countries in 2012, just three countries, namely Pakistan, Iraq and Afghanistan, suffered more than half of years' attacks and fatalities. Now, the next five frequently targeted countries were India, Nigeria, Somalia, Yemen and Thailand. What are your comments on the issue of Boko Haram and the security of the country at large and how the government has actually done or what they have done to help curb the Boko Haram insurgency. You see, I'm sure you must have heard from many people that uh, this Boko Haram of a sin, although they hide under the guise of Islam mm -hmm. to do what they are doing, but many Muslims are of the opinion that uh, they are not doing according to Islamic uh, teachings. And if you look at the history of uh, Northern Nigeria or Nigeria, here, Sokoto, for instance, we call it uh, the Calipet. And this Sokoto is the last empire, Islamic empire, to be conquered by the British in 1903 and the last empire in the whole of Nigeria, in the whole of Nigeria okay. to be conquered by the British okay. in 1903 and uh, that is the Sultanate and this Sultanate was founded by Usman Namfodio and Usman Namfodio was a reformer there was Islam in Nigeria there was Islam in the north but before the coming of Usman Nahodio, some practice, un-Islamic practice, has started coming into Islam. And therefore, when Usman Nahodio came, he tried to reform and bring up the true teaching of Islam. And uh, it is clear that in the true teaching of Islam, nobody has a right to kill anybody. You cannot kill a Muslim brother. Is this what we find in the Quran? Of course, yes. Okay. You can't. You have no right to kill somebody. In fact, therefore, you can see that uh, here, mostly, if you have time, you go around, you will see that although we are all not from Sokoto to Borno, are all northern Nigeria, but you will see that uh, the way we do things deepens. Here, we are like brothers and sisters and uh, where, where we love everyone. Everybody here is free to come and do his, uh, to, to, to mingle and do his things. Whether you are a Muslim or you are a Christian, whether you are from the south, from the east, even if you are not a Nigerian, you can come and do your business here without any molestation. Because that is the teaching. The teaching of Islam always emphasizes that you as a person, if you are a true Muslim, you should try and do some things so that somebody will see what you do and appreciate the good things in you and then embrace the religion. Or you preach to him Please to him, if you want him to come back, not to force him. There is no force in Islam. You cannot force anybody to become a Muslim. Yes, so, what I'm trying to tell, want to tell you is that, at Bannu, 
there are many reasons why that brought up Boko Haram. And uh, could be, could, could, can one of the reasons be that it is politically motivated? I think one of them is. One of them is. Because uh, we learned, uh, you know, politics, if you want to be in power, sometimes you may not know, you may be doing some things to your advantage at that time, and later it may be to your disadvantage. The same thing happened in the South, using of, uh, uh, <coughs> like in the South South, where people use torture to be into power. But later, the same people will work against you. I think that is one of the reasons. Okay, I'm going to ask you about a story that obviously left the world wondering what could have possibly happened. Mm. That is the missing Chibok girls. Yes. More than 200 girls went missing from a school mm. and it is alleged that Boko Haram abducted them. Yes. My question though is, is it actually possible that 200 or more than 200 girls could have been moved or transported from the school in Chibok to wherever Boko Haram was holding them without any military or any security people noticing some sort of movement? You see, it is not uh, noticing. It's not, anybody can notice anything. The, the point is taking action. Before now, military and many Nigerians don't care. You can see so many things happening and you don't care. And uh, so it is not a matter of whether they have been noticed. I believe many people must have noticed it, but they didn't care to pass information. And I think that has been the problem that has um, have been hampering this Boko Haram operation. People not willing to give security agent information. And also security agent not willing to do what they are supposed to do. I think you don't forget how hundreds of military officers were dismissed from the army for not going to the war, war front. And this must have been because of so many reasons, either because there was no motivation or there was no good leadership and so on and so forth. I believe, I believe it was not, they must have been seen, they must have been noticed. The, if you remember, we were told that uh, they went into the school, they went with some trucks, and then they took them on their way some about 50 girls were able to escape. Mm -hmm. So from where do they escape? So it's not, not a matter of noticing, it is a matter of taking action. If you see things, you don't take action, it follows. That time, has it been the, that administration took action, immediate action? Probably they must have, they could not even run with the Chibo girls. But how many days before it took even to convince the last administra administration. And now we're even talking about years. Yes. Some of them have not even come back at all. Yes. And uh, we are still hearing that uh, they are still around, which uh, to me, actually, I will doubt if they are still around. If there are 200, I doubt if 100 of them are still intact. But then that also brings us to the question that were there actually any girls that were abducted in the first place? Or this was just perhaps a way of trying to destabilize uh, you know, uh, the former administration uh, towards elections? No, it, I don't think. I think, uh, you know, it is what is happening all over, all over the world. These people want att uh, attention. They want a situation where what they want, they want to have negotiation power. I think uh, they wanted to have those girls so that the whole world will know what is happening in Nigeria. And probably if they want to negotiate, at least they have something to go no negotiate. Because up to date, they are still saying that the girls are there. And uh, if government is willing to go no negotiate, they will negotiate with them. So uh, I think that's, to me, that is my opinion of what has happened. Uh, they want attention and they, you pull, you, they have succeeded. I think it was only when those Chibo girls that uh, were taken that the whole world 
attention came to Nigeria and northern Nigeria and then so many people now started talking and uh, having concern on what is really happening. I think they have succeeded. Michael Murray is the former Director General of the National Orientation Services in Nigeria, recently sacked by the new Buhari administration. He shared his thoughts on the country's economy and security issues after more than a decade of being in service. seen a change of um, regimes with regards to President Buhari winning the elections just recently. Can we say that democracy won? Yes, of course. Democracy did uh, win because uh, it's a remarkable milestone in the fact that we transited from one government, one political party to another. It's the first time in 16 years, and it's the first time in the story of Nigeria. You know, we've had, recalling the story of Nigeria, you know that uh, the few attempts at military were, were disrupted by, I mean, the few attempts at democracy, sorry, were disrupted by military interventions. So this is the first time that we are transiting from civil to civil, uh, uh, and a party from one different party to another different party. And uh, it was peaceful. Uh, remarkable turnout, especially for the presidential election. Lots of interest in Africa and uh, across the world. And uh, against all odds and expectations, uh, it turned out to be uh, an example to the rest of Africa, uh, especially or particularly those countries that are finding it difficult to, to even organize a simple election to seek a second term. Okay, so what difference does General Buhari make for the economy? Well, at the moment, uh, lots of uh, things are, 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 you know, raving up. But particularly, what is interesting is that he has come to make sure that there is uh, additional integrity in the processes of doing government business. Um, since part one of the major thrust of the administration is to fight corruption and those blockages that have slowed down the interest of entrepreneurs into Nigeria. Because quite a lot of people think, because of the perception that has been created, that you cannot do business with Nigeria, you cannot do business in Nigeria easily, there is so much corruption. Now the fact that there is a posture that the man who has come there is not just uh, having integrity as part of his credentials, he is uh, walking the talk. And uh, again, there are other aspects aimed at strengthening the currency, ensuring that leakages even within government economic uh, uh, you know, uh, cycles are, are giving critical eye, the critical eye to ensure that leakages are not there. And if you see that the government system is um, properly insulated, then it will encourage some other persons to put in their resources, not necessarily uh, outsiders, but even Nigerians who may have the money and want to put their money in the businesses that will, you know, create jobs, expand the economy and uh, ensure the flow of, of capital. So far, Buhari seems to have focused on fighting Boko Haram giving newly appointed security chiefs a December deadline to end the insurgency. We are working hard towards achieving Mr. President's uh, deadline. And uh, just as I said, the deadline is very uh, significant, it's very important. Uh, however, 
the overriding uh, factor there is the defeat of uh, the Boko Haram terrorists cleaning up the corrupt oil and the gas sector by appointing a new head of the state oil company that is the NNPC and rebuilding Nigeria's image with strategic diplomatic visits. Uh, today the crude term uh, bid has been opened by the NNPC uh, on TV publicly and you could see investors all over the place in the hall where the business has been trans transacted. It's never been like that before. So these are the kind of things that will give confidence to the investor. Now it's done pub in the open, with the, in the full glare of the media and the public. So it means that if you apply to do business, the, the, the procurement process will be open, transparent and open to everyone. Nigeria's President Mohamedou Buhari doesn't seem to be interested in appointing 36 ministers of the Federation, though he has gotten into the process and almost finished. The president took his time to form his cabinet and recently said all of his ministers wa won't be rather getting a portfolio. What took President Buhari a long time or rather a delay in his choosing of the cabinet? Well, he, he has, my opinion, my opinion on this will not be different from what he has said himself. The fact that he needed to do a proper uh, you know, uh, scrutiny of the faith, of the belief and competence of the people he would like to uh, work with, you know, within the period of his stay in government. And uh, you can see that most of the people that are coming are those that he has been with them for some time, so he can vouch for their integrity, their work spirit, and uh, even uh, loyalty, loyalty to the country. And in most, the process, mostly. some ministers have been kicked out because they've been accused of corruption. We've read in latest reports that some of them were even found with millions of cash stuffed in their houses. Can you just comment on that? Well, it is possible that in spite of the search, some people may have hidden certain things. And that, they, the, the, and that is why he again has subjected them to continuous scrutiny. He has not said, hey, I am no all, I have finished. Whoever I have nominated, let them go through further scrutiny, public scrutiny, legislative scrutiny, security scrutiny, and so forth, and, so, and that's ongoing. And I think it's the mark of, uh, of, of courage. Okay, let's talk about the security issues a bit. The Boko Haram has really plagued the, the country of Nigeria. Mm. What is the status quo right now with regards to security? Well, uh, like you observed, Nigeria has had its own fear or unfair share of the security challenge, especially the action of Boko Haram uh, in the Northeast. Uh, most of uh, the areas that have come under uh, attack in the FCT and, 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 and some areas like Nyanya, Kuji of recent. Uh, the government came determined to introduce new strategies, and it did. We have seen greater coordination between intelligence and the military. We have also seen the move to involve more citizens' uh, participation and attention to issues of uh, security awareness because the citizens must play a complementary role in this fight against uh, terror. So, um, so far, that uh, some few changes that have been introduced, including the relocation of the command center, the, the directive to ensure that all the uh, commanding officers move to site, has uh, paid off in terms of the morale of soldiers. What is interesting and what you can take home is that the, the soldiers now are not on the defensive. They are taking the fight to the insurgents. And that is uh, what we didn't have, we, we didn't have in, the, in, in, in the earlier circumstance. And um, mostly as a result of the change in the, in the direction of uh, strategy. Um, today, we have, uh, the, the, of course, the, you know, a lot of uh, equipment have been acquired, hardware, military hardware have been acquired to assist the fight. And that has helped to degrade the capacity and the leather uh, disposition of the terrorists. But we have also uh, seen that 
the terrorists have had to devise new approaches to attacking softer targets, uh, less combative, uh, you know, uh, citizens or groups. Is, is this where they are now using kids or perhaps mentally ill people? Yes, they use kids, they use mentally ill people, they use uh, uh, ladies and, 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 and things like that. Um, and even at that, it's, uh, suicide bombing. Then they came attacking, killing and burning villages. Now what they use are cluster bombs and uh, detonation of uh, self, self uh, you know, in crowded spaces, uh, which you would agree is difficult to check. But uh, intelligence has uh, intensified work. Quite a number have been taken in. Quite a number of people have been taken in. And, uh, and that is why, even at the level of my agency, the National Orientation Agency, we are training citizens to understand how, you know, to be more alert, how they can identify suspicious movements, suspicious objects, and what to do when they see these things. That way, we have everybody, you know, on the alert, and uh, it should it should help intelligence. Okay, let me just take you back a, a, a bit. What really happened to the Chibok girls, and where are they as we speak? Well. Um, Chibok girls, from the records available and the, again, quoting our president and all other intelligence sources, still remain within the Sampisa forest. Some uh, have, uh, have been forcefully converted and married. Uh, but essentially, the conviction is that they are still within an identifiable area and that uh, nobody is, uh, and uh, intelligence and security is making sure that they don't slip from that line of sight and uh, care is being taken to ensure that they are not uh, killed in the process of rescue and so the the processes are, pro are being meticulously followed and implemented with total care to ensure that citizens taken are rescued and in fact you have seen that quite a number of people are being rescued on a continuous basis mm -hmm. and uh, even some who have given, who have uh, given up, have uh, confessed and have given useful information that is helping intelligence. Partly, one of the reasons why uh, intensive military action may not have taken place in in Sambisa Forest. Are there any leads to the Boko Haram leader? Uh, these are matters of detail and deep security, which uh, because we realize what information has done in the past to obstruct uh, his capture. So we want to avoid discussing the leader, but for, you know, looking at the solution. And part of the solution is not necessarily the leader, because once the leader does not have the followers, it may be difficult for him to act. He acts based on the conviction that he has people following him. So the strategies that are being implemented is uh, to ensure that even his recruitment um, uh, processes are, you know, uh, tampered with, and uh, people are given access to more useful information, more useful uh, education and uh, opportunities that will not lure them to uh, tendencies such as his. Okay, would you say that there is a religious separation between the Christians and the Muslim, and perhaps? causing the instability that we see? No, because a number of Muslims have reacted to this and the attacks have also uh, been perpetrated in mosques mm -hmm. and churches as well. Uh, and uh, in these areas, in Borno State, you have Muslims and Christians, indigenous to Borno State. In fact, I think it's uh, about 40, 60 percent, 40 Christians and 60 Muslims. So it is not as if the terrorist uh, segment or, the, or they attack everybody. So I think they want to enforce another kind of ideology further and above um, what the Muslims that we know practice, the authentic Muslims that we know practice, and even the Christians. Okay, so what are your like, final remarks with regards to moving Nigeria forward? What would you want to say to the people that will be listening right now? Well, Nigeria needs itself. Nigeria needs itself. Nigeria needs its citizens to stand for it at all times. It is not enough to keep complaining and not doing anything. Let us be part of the solution. 
let us positively uh, gather around our, and, and stand by our country with solutions, not complaining and doing nothing about it. Like I said, you cannot wish for something and not work for it. It doesn't make sense. So if we wish good for this country, if we believe that Boko Haram must stop, let us all join in and make it happen. It is possible to do so. And we need the cooperation and support of people around us. We need the cooperation of Africans. We need the support of international community and anyone who thinks he has the solution. Because terrorism is a global challenge. It's a generational challenge. And all of us must rise up to it. This is our own generational war for the world. During this trip, there were also some interesting things. Right now we are at the Ushafa Pottery Center in the town of Buari. The pottery making in this town is of significant value because they have been doing it for decades and centuries, passed on from their forefathers until today. They make pottery and they're famous for it. So Abu Bakr here is just going to take us briefly on the whole process of pottery. Okay, once again, you're welcome to Ushafa Pottery Center. In Ushafa Pottery Centre here, we carry out two forms of pottery making. Mm -hmm. The traditional pottery making section and the modern pottery making section. Okay. I'll just briefly give us the breakdown of what we do at the uh, modern pottery making section. Okay. In the section here, we live at the production studio where we carry out productions. We produce works ranging from the functional ones okay. to the decorative ones. Okay. And the process, uh, we do um, the hand building form of production and also the wheel form of... Um, um, Where you use yeah, a wheel. Okay. The wheel form of production. Okay. And in our studio here, we make use of um, two types of clay. The primary clay and the secondary clay. Okay. The primary clay is the popular clay, which is called the kaolin or China clay. Okay. It is called China clay because not because it was originated from China, but the Chinese first started using China clay. Okay. If you see it, it's very very white and it is clay in its purest form. All right. So I'll just give us a breakdown of the secondary clay which we use majorly in our studio here. Okay. The secondary clay is also further divided into two. The earthenware clay mm -hmm. and the stoneware clay. If you get to encounter this clay, it's very, very plastic. All right. Very, very elastic. Okay. And as such, you can bend it, you can twist it, and produce whatever you want. You want, want in any shape. Yeah, in any form. Okay. So the potter um, at the studio here carries out demonstration. You get to see the elasticity and the plasticity of the clay okay. that you can press, you can contrast, you can relax it and produce whatever you design in mind. Okay. And in the studio here, the produce works ranging from the functional okay. to the We're decorative ones. Okay. You get to see some works that serve um, a particular purpose, okay. like the casseroles, the teacups, all right. The teapot and all that, they perform a uh, particular function. Okay. And we have some works that are for mere decoration. This, they, they range from one um, function to the other. Okay. Like they serve both interior and exterior decoration. Decoration. Like okay. We have planters for both interior and exterior, exterior. decoration. So are you going to give us a demonstration here? So I'll give us a demonstration of how the works are being produced. Okay. So um, as we produce here, I'll still take us to our gallery and show okay. us some work. So All right. Cool. So first and foremost, before you could produce anything, you need to um, knead the clay by removing air pockets that are trapped inside the clay and okay. also some impurities. Okay. So as you remove it, we have the throwing wheel. Right now I'm going to the throwing wheel to carry out the um, Okay. So, um, this I'm is finding the, this very interesting. This is the um, <laughs> electric throwing wheel. <coughs> Okay. 
the clay is centered at the center of the disc. Okay. So let me just do the demonstration. What you're seeing on it mm -hmm. is a wooden bat. Probably I wanted to produce a big rock. Okay. That's why the wooden bat is sitting on the disc. All right. The wheel. Okay. So let me just do it. Okay, so you're actually stretching it right yeah, now. I'm I can see it's changing it. in size and in shape. In doing that, I'm trying to make it be at the center. Okay. So right now it's at the center. Okay. The next thing I do is take it down. Wow, look at that. Wow. Next thing, I open so I can get the space that I'll use to work. Okay. So this is like um, my working space. Oh, wow. So the next step, for me to start pulling it up to get a height. Wow. So it goes up, up, like that, until I get the height I really desire. Okay. So I still keep on pulling it. So this thing can stretch to even as high as anything? Very well, depending on the size of the clay. Of the clay that you or yes. started with, okay. Right now, let me just give it a shape. All right. Let me just hold it. I can see the shape is coming up now. So this is just a mere uh, demonstration. So I really don't have something to produce, but I'll give you something. So I'm okay. still bulging it out. Okay. To give it a shape. Okay. All right, so how long is this whole process going to be? Okay. It will soon end very soon. Okay. Oh, there we go. I can actually see the shape of a, a pot already. Yeah, a pot. Interesting stuff. Um, this one... It can serve a purpose of probably to store water in it. Okay. Or you could use it to plant flowers. Okay. Multi purpose. Yes. All right. So this is it. Okay. So would you like to show us your gallery? Let's just see some of the stuff that you are already made. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just move down to the gallery. So okay. I know it's a very clean job there. <laughs> All right, so these are so some of the things yeah, that you have done. Is, um, you're welcome to the gallery. I was explaining to us earlier on about um, the two forms of production. Okay. The kind of works we produce, okay. the functional and the decorative ones. Okay. In our um, gallery here, up here you could see casseroles. Yes. These casseroles, they are functional. 
okay. in that you could um, store food in them, okay. whether to make the food hot or Just cool. to serve on the yes. table. We have, um, right there, we have a water jug. You could use it to serve water, a glass um, water jug. And also here, same casserole I showed to you at the other end. Okay. It serves function. Okay. Then we have um, flour versus majorly in, in the gallery, flour versus okay. the, for decorative purposes. Mm, I can see many of those around. So what we do is we, we get them, we put flour in them, both for interior and exterior, exterior. decoration. Beautiful so stuff. Majorly, that's what we do in our centre here. Okay, beautiful stuff. Well, thank you very much for taking us around. You're it was such a pleasure. You're I'm doing my business here. Okay. Yes. Of molding the pots. Of molding pots to serve. Mm -hmm. But our problem is that now we are not the we are not seeing market now. Since when Buhari climbed this case, things it can't change once, especially we that we are here. We are not seeing anybody here to buy our markets. Okay. And especially with that we are widows. In body time, you have to take care of us. Mm -hmm. But now, as the body time, the chair, you know, the mind of the widow, we are suffering. Please, we are crying for you to go and tell Buhari so that I may leave the chair, may leave the contract for us. So that when you give them the contract, we too, they will come and buy our things here. When you enter my shop now, you can say as my shop full, no market. And I know how for us one who go take care of me. It's because now be now for here they see my market, they buy food, they do school fees for my children. So now, nothing, nothing. And I don't have for us one. So that's our problem for here. Before we were buried there for in chair, we just see many, many strangers here. Even on board, they used to come plenty, but now nobody. If some come to buy our market, they will complain for us, say, the Buhari not the best salary now. Some don't go complain for us, say, it's getting to four months now, three months now. Without getting salaries? If they will get their salary. How do they take buy our things? They will come to cry for us, saying, we that we are here, how we go do? Mm -hmm. So, we are crying for you. So they are saying President Buhari yes. has not been paying them. They are not be paying them workers. How do I buy the, the our market? Mm. So mm. I beg, when you go, you cry for us for the Buhari. I have to leave the contract so that when you give everybody the contract, they will come and buy our market. Mm -hmm. That is our problem for you. Okay, so how long have you been doing this? Okay. When I mod this one, I spent like today, mm -hmm. I can mod like four. Mm -hmm. When I mod like four, like tomorrow, I will come out there, they will take breeze. I will not repair them. When they reach like one week, I will fire them. They will be like this one. Okay, like yes. this beautiful one? Yes. This is beautiful. Uh, yes. Like this one now, it's and then you, now. And then you polish them up and I'll then they look all nice. Them and with the lock of this tree. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, see that. Okay. Okay. So that they will not shine. Okay. Like that. When you people come, people that have money, they will buy. Mm -hmm. They don't have money, they will say they don't get money. Because why do they pay? Mm -hmm. That is the problem. Okay, so this molding of the pots like this, is this a cultural thing of the Buari town? Of no, the Buari no, people? No, no, no. Since as I, my mama born me, since mm -hmm. I'm a small, they teach me. Have to, how to do it. How to do it. So as I come go, I come marry. So you know say uh, like Bari town, when they give contract, they give contract. So we are seeing many strangers here. But now, now now Bari town now, we know they see market. Things just change once. Okay. Okay. So when President Goodluck Jonathan was there, did he pay people and did people come and buy? No, like, <coughs> uh, especially the worker, mm -hmm. when they give the contract, when they pay the salary for the workers, uh -huh. then they will come about this what they like. Mm -hmm. That is the problem. Okay. Yes. okay. But now, Buhari know they give money. If you see some, they will say five months now. Four months, my dad, how will I buy the party? Me too, I the five food I eat for house, I know they get. Mm -hmm. We that we hear, how we go do? 
Not be wahala. <laughs> no, it's not for wahala. Now wahala now. Especially now, I mean, now we do I be? Uh. If I know see market, who will give me food to eat? Mm. Eh? Now, wahala now. Nigeria. Thank God we are survived well in the, the grace of God. We are, we, are, we are getting some new changes about this, this, uh, this, uh, what can I say now? <laughs> Okay, this is your work, the work that you do. Yes, we okay. are we are doing in good good way in the grace of God. We are we are getting some uh, good customers. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you got uh, customers every day. Right? Yes. Okay. We have it in the grace of God. And then we are there are some um, although, how can I say it? Although like the people that are that I like for this like this we are getting some uh, roller. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, and this is how you survive. Yes. Food to the table. Yeah, well, security. Everything. Yes, we have we have many security. They are tackling our cries. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you are happy. Yes. Happy, happy. We are so happy. So can I get a lift? And now? yeah, and then there are uh, and not fuel. Fuel is very the price fuel for is fuel. reduced. Is reduced. Okay, so it's cheaper yes, for you. We now. are very happy with this. And you can afford it. Yes. Okay, that's mm. good. Mm. So can you give me a lift? Left. Yes, on your Okada. Mm. How left? How what like I'm I left? want to sit on the Okada and then you drive with me, yes. take me to where I want to go. Yes. You can? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> okay, so this young enthusiast is actually going to give me a lift on his Okada. And I'm off to the market. Watch me. So what do I do? Do I hold on to you or do I just sit? Do I hold on? Okay. So we're just going around the block, right? <laughs> you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like I'm going to fall off. Okay. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god thank you very much thank you, thank you. okay that was just one really scary ride for me i guess i just have to get used to it this is the okada one of the modes of transportation in nigeria a lot of people use this to go about every day in their daily lives to work to the market and any way to connect to different towns and cities this is known as the okada the famous okada Nigerians are therefore now strongly determined more than ever to lay a solid foundation for an enduring democracy that will be the pride of future generations of the Nigerians. The present civilian government has shown its commitment to even development of the country and cases of marginalization in certain parts of the country. Today, Nigeria enjoys peace, in spite of uh, periodic crisis in consultation in handling issues. The administration is determined to transform the country in line with democratic principles into a land of opportunity, equity of government's use of dialogue and progress and prosperity for all. In my closing remark, I must say you can't help but notice that Nigerians are very friendly people, very welcoming, very natured, very cultured, very open.